Welcome back to Joe and Di's allotment channel and thank you for diving up being on the camera. I'm Joe. Um, what we're going to do today is make some make our own bouillon powder um, using our own vegetables. Um, we usually make it a couple of times a year and it varies on what we use um, depending on what time of the year it is. If we make it in uh, the winter uh, it will have parsnips in, it will have leeks in and whatever else we've got in store at the time. Uh, this time of year we've got courgettes available, we've got tomatoes available, we've got some beans available, parsley, spinach, so it just depends on what we've got to um, put into it basically. But we make it into a powder form. So it's no different to sort of the vegetable stock cubes you buy in the shops. It's uh, They make it into a sort of cube, cube uh, basically, to use as a sort of stock for soups, stews, loads of other recipes. Uh, but the difference is you can control what goes into it. If you look at the ones in the shops, they've got additives, flavourings, MSG, all sorts of stuff in them. Um, but when you make it your own, you're using your own um, harvest, so you know exactly what's in your bouillon powder. Um, so I was having a look at today at, I think there's an organic powder available um, on Amazon. I think it was six pound for 150 grams, additive free, that one was. So, I mean, I've never weighed ours, but I will wait today and see sort of how it compares in sort of price. But yeah, um, so yeah, I'd like to say thank you as well. Actually, we've had a lot of subscribers join the channel recently. I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's recently joined. And thank you to everyone who's already following the channel. It's uh, really good when people join. It makes us sort of uh, want to do more videos, really. <laughs> so what we do is we'll um, chop up the uh, various things we've got here. And we've got some stuff that we've powdered previously, like basil, leeks, mixed herbs, um, parsley, garlic. So we can add those at the end. And we've also got some powdered Jerusalem artichokes, which are really good because they, they act as like a thickener as well. So they're good to add. So we'll powder all these. And then we'll add some of the uh, dried stuff as well to it to bulk it out. Um, what we do, we use a slicer to do some of the stuff so it can get uniform sizes. And uh, other stuff I'll chop myself. We've got a nine tray dehydrator, um, which we've had since about 2008, I think. 2014. 2014, sorry. I live about eight years. And we, as you can see, we dehydrate all sorts of stuff. It's a real um, you know, benefit in terms of storage. You can sort of dehydrate bulky things into a small amount. Um, and once you've bought the jars, these sort of jars, the uh, mason jars, there's no other cost really, other than a sort of little bit of electric use to dehydrate stuff. But the, and these jars last for years. And those jars are coffee jars, aren't they? Oh yeah, these are coffee jars. These are really good, actually. These Dow Egbert's coffee jars. They've got a really good seal on them. We like to use those as well. So we'll try and fill all nine trays today and dehydrate it. And then what we do, once it's thoroughly dried, we, we'll powder it and then mix it all together. And that'll be our bouillon mixture. So yeah, um, I think the last time we made it was in to the captain's log. <laughs> Last time we made it was on the 19th of December and we had Jerusalem artichokes, leeks, carrots, marrow, parsnips and celery added to it that time so it's different every time we make it but it doesn't matter it's still a lovely flavour enhancer to add to your meals, stews, so it's like a quick stock cube basically. So yeah what we do is we get on and chop all the uh, various things up and then we'll put them on the trays and we'll talk about putting it into the dehydrator afterwards. We're doing the pores yet there. They come out a nice uniform size so we can get them on the trays and they dry a lot easier as well like that. I might have to cut this first. Done. We're now doing the potatoes.
Slicing the onions now. So we've got these little tiny carrots that we um, pulled out of a pot the other day. Rather than just composting them or trying to cook them because they're so small, we can put them in the bouillon. They're quite good, good size for drying. Slicing some tomatoes now, which add a nice flavour to the bouillon. So we've chopped, the, chopped everything up and loaded it. We end up with four and a half trays of courgettes, one and a half uh, trays of potatoes, half of an onion, half a tray of onions, a little sprig of parsley, half a tray of beans and half a tray of spinach, one tray of tomato and half a tray of carrot. Um, the tomato we have to put on the sheet because it's very juicy. Um, onions quite well sliced and the on uh, potato we saw those. What else have we got? We've got some carrot here. The carrot we just sort of uh, chopped them roughly and put them in there basically. Yet. Oh, this is the beans. So beans and spinach are on one sort of tray as well. So they go into the oven now. They go into the oven. They go into the dehydrator for around 10 hours at 140 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Some of them will be done before that. Some do be before. The um, parsley will be done quite quick. Yeah, so if they're done, we'll take them out and put them into a bowl. Um, yeah, if you haven't got a dehydrator, you can use the oven to dehydrate stuff. Um, you'd have to set the oven at the lowest temperatures, around 80 on our one, and you have to leave the door ajar a bit because you have to reduce it to a minimum of like 60 degrees Celsius to dry stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you can get a dehydrator, please consider one. They're great, great at reducing stuff for storage. Um, great value as well, as I said earlier. I mean, the bouillon would cost six pa six pounds for 150 grams. I think we'll get quite a lot out of this once it's powdered. We'll let you know at the end. Um, so yeah, um, we'll get on and dry that now. We'll come back and show you how we sort of process it into a powder afterwards. It's been dehydrating for four and a half hours now. So we'll um, have a look at the spinach and the parsley. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's good. You can see, probably, so they're done. So we'll take out the spinach. I'll cover those up in a moment. Just spread out the beans a bit further. A bit more room for drying. And we'll have a little bit of parsley as well. Yeah, that's all dry. We'll have to take the sticks out of them ones. The onions are coming dry quite well. Still quite wet the courgettes. Potatoes are turning into uh, Walker's crisps. Tomato just started to dry, still a bit sticky. There's another four hours, to, four, six hours to go, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, another six hours to go on though, so they'll be thoroughly dry in six hours time. So we'll uh, cover these up roughly. We'll, we'll crumble them again tomorrow anyway, but we'll just take out the sticks and uh, stalks of their parsley, yeah? Take out the stalks and we we'll leave the rest in there till tomorrow. We'll be probably put it into a blender anyway and powder it completely. So we'll come back tomorrow morning, probably now. So we've been drying our produce for 10 hours now and nice and crumbly, the courgettes. Potatoes are very, very dry. Oh, my goodness. 
very crunchy. Oops, fine all over the place. Onions, nice and crispy and dry. The beans, yep. Tomatoes, yep. And more courgettes and the, <laughs> the carrots have shrunk completely. It's amazing. That was a carrot. Wow. Yeah, so what we do now is we'll blend them into a powder. Um, this is what we took out last night because these dry first. This is the parsley and the spinach. So I'll give those a blend first, I think. So it's just a matter of putting them in the blender. Stop it from here. So we put that into the uh, blender. So that's reduced the volume by about half just blending it. So it's a nice little powder now. So that's the first thing done. So we do the courgettes next. So screw the top on. Truly powdered. A couple of little bits left in there, but that won't matter when you put it into a meal. The potatoes are very, very dry. So what I'll do is I'll break them up a bit first, but I'll put them into the um, blender. Do a little bit of blender's work for it. So that was one and a half trays of potatoes two very large potatoes. This might make a bit of a racket now though. Potato powder. Or potato flour, I suppose. Chuck that in next. Next thing is the onions. So these are the um, French climbing beans. They've dried really, really well. So that's the bean powder. Nice green colour actually. That's a bit of colour to the bouillon. And we've got some tomatoes now. So the final tray is carrots and courgettes. Put those in. So what we'll do is we add, we'll add some of the uh, pre-dry stuff as well. Might put three tablespoons of Jerusalem artichoke powder in there. Cause that's a nice thickening agent. We've got some garlic powder. I'll put a tablespoon of that in. Some meat powder. Put a tablespoon of that in. And some basil. So chuck a couple of those in, I think. That's it. Give that a mix up together. So 
That's all lovely and mixed together now. So put that into the jar. And we'll have a weigh up and see how much we got. So, so you can make your own vegetable bouillon with no additives, no preservatives, no colourings, just pure vegetables. So that's near enough filled up a whole jar, lovely. And it weighs about uh, 450 grams if you take off the weight of the jar. So that's good, good little um, amount there. As I said yesterday, I'll, yesterday, yeah, it was yesterday actually. <laughs> I said yesterday on the vlog, um, to buy an equivalent um, organic, additive-free uh, vegetable bouillon mixture on Amazon because you're six pound for 150 grams. So that's 18 quid's worth in there. 18 pounds worth of uh, bouillon, which is well worth the effort. Um, and that probably lasts us a while. We're still working our way through the batch we made last December, um, but that won't last much longer. And um, we'll probably make some more in the winter when the leeks and parsnips are available as well on the Jerusalem artichokes again. So yeah, well worth it. Well worth having a try. As I said, you can, if you haven't got a dehydrator, you can use an oven as well. Um, yeah, hope you found that useful. Hope you've enjoyed the vlog and um, give us a thumbs up if you have and leave us a comment or if you'd like to subscribe to our channel please do so using the uh, picture at the bottom you can subscribe and follow our journey our sort of aim is to not only show how we grow stuff but show how we sort of process and use it as well so thanks very much for watching and happy gardening everybody